WRCR, good morning. Good morning. It's Tina Traster. Tina Traster of the Rockland County Business Journal. That's right. And if you want to access what's in the Business Journal at this very moment in time, you go to rcbizbizjournal.com. You got it. I know. I'm amazing. I am amazing. Yeah. So what is in rcbizjournal.com right now? Oh, let's see. Well, we, uh, we put up an interesting story uh, this morning about an entrepreneur in Congress. Uh, we, there's a company in Congress called Cargis International, Inc., in, in, uh, as I just said, in Congress, and they've been there 40 years. They uh, supply uh, to dentists um, nationwide, uh, you know, the sort of things that dent- dentists need. And um, this is a, a second-generation family business. And Brian Marquette, who is one of the um, offspring of the couple who found, founded the business, uh, sees big opportunity in the CBD market, the, um, the cannabis market, cannabis oil market. Okay, yeah. And so it, this is kind of interesting. He's tapping into um, his, his database of dentists um, in an effort to sell uh, cannabis oil because um, dentists are a prime target of people who deal with neck and hand and back pain. So, um, you know, his, his pitch is instead of, you know, popping pills or, or using Advil, which um, ruins the stomach, you know, he's, he's trying to market this um, holistic product to a, 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 mar- a base that he already has uh, from, from having, you know, this, built up this company over, over four decades. So um, just I think it's an interesting pivot. I, I think that, well, the CBD market is going to be huge. Um, the, uh, the estimates are is that um, by two, 2022 uh, that it's going to uh, go to a, almost a $2 billion market. And um, so I think, and, and also, you know, the farm bill, uh, made it legal back in December. So I think here in the county, it's interesting to watch, um, you know, what entrepreneurs are jumping on this bandwagon and the different ways that they're doing it. Um, there's a cannabis oil, uh, uh, like a franchise, I, yeah, that we wrote about a while ago that opened up at the Palisade Center. Um, and I know just, you know, from, from watching Facebook, there are other people who are, marketing this in, in small ways. Um, but we wrote about this company um, and, and their uh, oil, which is called Mark III CBD Oil, um, because I think it's, it's an interesting uh, pivot, you know, when you have a, um, somebody who's, who's got a, a business that would seem like it has nothing to do with cannabis oil, and he's kind of found a way to tie the two together. So that's sort of interesting. Um, I, okay, I'll call, uh, I just had a, a call from a, a listener, I guess, on, on some other matters. But, I mean, keep listening to Tina Traster right after the show, or right after this segment, we can, we can take your call. Uh, because I wanted to ask you about, uh, we had George Holman on this morning, okay? Mm-hmm. And now, the first floor of Macy's is going to be uh, at uh, home. rented out to, uh, or whatever, at home. Mm-hmm. And he said there's some significant prospects in terms of the second floor with a restaurant and, 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 and a retailer. Do you know, know anything about that? You know, I hear a lot of rumors, mm-hmm. um, but at this point, I don't have, I can't put a name on anything yet that, that I know for sure. Um, I think what I've heard is that, um, I've heard that, that, you know, the Simon Mall is definitely looking at the redevelopment of the Sears buildings. Yeah, he said the same thing this morning. Yeah, I've heard that, and um, I, I don't know what's going to go on that second floor of, of Macy's. I mean, um, you know, that's a tough, it's, a, I guess, a, another 100,000 square feet, you know, and I don't know if a, if a restaurant wants to be on the second floor up there. So um, lots, of, lots of, of, of companies, you know, prospect, um, but I don't know of anything specific up there yet. Well, the, well, I'm talking about Macy's, not Sears. Uh, the old Macy's. No, I know, I know. Yeah. It, it would be second floor. Right, right. I, I think most um, major restaurant chains 
would would shy away from being on the second floor of a, of a re- Well, you look at the Palisade Center. I mean, uh, re- uh, I can't think of the one I like. The Chili's and the TGI Fridays, well, they're up on the fourth, right? Right, but so, they're inside of a, you know, a mall setting. Yeah. You know, where you have a, a, a con- congregation of, of, of uh, food retailers. Mm-hmm. So it might make sense there. You know, um, I was I was looking at a story over the weekend, uh, was maybe before the weekend, about um, uh, Netflix looking to um, looking for to make to do, looking for production space in Brooklyn, and um, I was thinking about you know how we've rolled out the welcome mat to all the, uh, the the filming that goes on all around the county, which I think is is a great thing, great source of revenue, and a great alternative to you know, shops and, and restaurants. And um, I was thinking about all of the large empty spaces that we have that could really um, serve the production, the film production world um, really well. I know down at the IRG campus in Pearl River, um, the, you know, what they're trying to make the life sciences campus, they have a lot of um, empty space down there. That they, they, They're not at all leased up. And there's some effort underway to use that site for filming and, and production. But even, you know, we have a lot of very large, uh, empty spaces like the J.C. Penney building uh, that really could attract um, film production. So I think that is a really great economic driver. I think Rockland should think about that because um, it's, it's a great industry, uh, you know, with all of the um, Amazon and Netflix and Hulu and even CNN, all of these companies are looking for original content. And so there's uh, the film production industry is really blossoming. I, I, don't, I don't think that we have a lot of film production here in the county. It's growing, though. It really is. I mean, I, don't ask me up here in North Rockland. Half the, the, half the year of Sparky's Diner's business involves of, of companies filming movies here. Right. I don't know what attracts them to it, but it really, something does. Now, so, they come, so they come here to the county to actually do the filming, right? They, they look, the, yep. the sets, the, 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 um, the rural roads make it look like they could be anywhere from here to the Adirondacks. I know every time I go to see a, a movie, I'm looking for familiar things, you know, road signs and, and familiar landmarks and I, the Hudson Valley, I mean, it's, you know, it's basically, you know, Hollywood on the East Coast for filming. That is for the film crews that come in, you know, they're here and then they leave and um, they're only here for a couple of days. But I'm talking about the production houses uh, that where, where it would bring in, you know, jobs and, and full-time, um, you know, a, a full-time population that, that eats here and shops here and lives here. You know, in other words, the, in, the the stuff that goes on, not with the cameras outside, but when they're at, where they're actually putting the films together, the production studios, the sound, the the, the color, all that, all that stuff. Um, that's there's a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, there's space for it too. And there's space for it here in the county. So that that was that was kind of the point I was making, is that it would be um, you know great to tie that together. It's, you know, natural. Um, uh, you know, we're already we already uh, are doing a lot of filming here. It would be great to market the county as a place for film production. And given all of these large empty structures, instead of just you know to continue filling with more, what we need another big box restaurant here. You know, we we need another big box store here. I don't I don't think so. Um, so that's why it's it's. Well, it's, George Holman just seemed to. Really buoyant this morning. I mean, you know, he's got uh, Aldi's coming. Um, he's got uh, you know Bob's Discount Furniture. My God, you see them on television every time you turn the set on. Uh, they're moving to a much larger location from where they were. I don't know if this, the original one has been rented out yet. But George Fields, you know, in terms of retail, I guess you can f- refer to these as box stores. It, uh, yeah. They're well, it's, doing it's, all right. It's, it's it, You know what? I, I, I think it's a little short-sighted. I think we have... Um, we're, it's it's a down market move, okay. It's you know it's it's down market from from the department store stores and um, 
you know, it brings in all the problems. You have fewer employees in these large stores like Ocean State, Job Lot, and At Home. These are the kind of stores that don't employ a lot of employees. They don't pay high wages. And they flood the market with products that we already have here. There's, there's, a, um, there's a home goods, not, I think, somewhere else in Nanuet on Route 59 that's not far from, from At Home. It, it's, it's more of the same... It, it's you know it doesn't add a new element to the mix here, and I, I just and I've said this before on this show I just think that you know for economic development and for this new committee that's formed um, what we really need to be thinking about is uh, you know retail that 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 is, that is forward looking. I mean there are a lot of new trends in retail. For example, one of the things that that I, I wrote about last week there's two trends. There's there, the Barnes and Noble is closing down a lot of stores, and so is, um, I think, is Bed Bath & Beyond. And what, they're, what these retailers are doing is they're not necessarily going away, but they are um, re, they're re, they're not rebranding, but they're, they're changing their formats. They're looking for smaller spaces and a much more interactive experience um, inside the stores. And with these really, really large, you know, furniture discounts and at-homes and, and those kinds of stores, that's not where the, the wave of, of, of um, productive retail is going um, because I follow the retail trends and I see what's going on. It's all about the experience, you know, the consultation in the store, the, you know, the add-ons, the coffee, the... I mean, you could, you know, there's lots of different things that are going on, but the, the footprint is smaller. You know, the Barnes and Noble out in what was it? Out in um, Michigan, I think it was, um, and you can see the story on my site. They're they're, they're talking about, um, I think it was like Lego section for the kids, and you know, a diversification of merchandise. But at the same time, they're they're scaling down the size of the stores. So, you know, you have to look at what's going on nationally to see where the productivity is. Here, and here's just one more stat to think about. But um, they're saying that more than 75,000 stores could close uh, within the next, um, what is it, five years. So where? Five, six years, na- nationwide. Okay. But 75,000 stores, I mean, that is a lot of, st- of, of closed retail. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if I were driving economic development in this county, I would be really focused on, um, you know, what is, what is going to work in, in the future. I would look at what is not working. And, and, and what is not working are these massive, um, first of all, what's not working is a glut of the same kind of retail in a in a short in a, in a small, you know in a short radius, and also what's not working are these large big box you know not service oriented stores. I you know I don't think that millennials and the generations you know behind them are going to be shopping that way. Um, so again, it's like. You know, I, I think if we saw um, a, a more of a diversification of how we're using our commercial space here, it would be more exciting than hearing about another Chipotle or another whatever. Well, as it plays out, we'll talk to you about it every week. There are folks who, as you know, will disagree with that I scenario. Know. So we'll see how it plays out. You, yeah. uh, you're, 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 uh, what? Just, to, on that point, one more, just for a second, just real quick. They've, they're opening up a ginormous mall down in uh, the Secaucus area. Uh, I'm sorry, by the Meadowlands, uh, it, supposedly by the end of the summer. And they think they're going to get people far and wide to come to that. Well, that's because that place is like something that has we've never seen before. Yeah, so it's got to have an indoor water park, an indoor ski slope, but it's also going to be mostly retail. It's it's such a mixture of things. It's over eight acres. It's got a Lego land. It's got, um, a, like you said, a ski uh, jump, a water park. I'm, I'm. It's got. Um, I mean, it's it's like something we've never seen before. Um, that 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 mall is some twenty five years in the making. Right. And I, I mean, I, I genuinely think it's going to draw a lot of curiosity seekers. And yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it is the template um, at, at the, you know, at the greatest scale of what retailers are trying to do. It's all about the experience. 
you know, yep. and, it, and you know, and and the job lots and the at homes don't speak to that. All right. Anyway, your uh, articles are available at any time just by going on to rcbizbizjournal.com. You got it. And we'll continue this next week. Thank you, uh, Tina. Have a great week.